Hello, good afternoon. These are the Look North headlines this Thursday lunchtime. The Yorkshire mum taking on the government, claiming she's been discriminated against for taking maternity leave. And a former mayor of Sheffield talks of his own experiences of racism. Good afternoon. The Chancellor and North Yorkshire MP Rishi Sunak is facing a legal challenge over a policy to help self-employed people during the coronavirus pandemic. The self-employed income support scheme pays 80% of average earnings over three years, but does not take into account maternity leave. Campaigners say this is indirect sex discrimination and want him to review the policy. Gemma Dillon reports. The woman behind York Proms has watched her business grow over the last three years. When lockdown came, her income dried up. The government's scheme pays 80% of average earnings over three years. But she feels penalised because she took maternity leave. It was a difference of between four and six hundred pounds a month. So about fifteen hundred pounds, seventeen hundred pounds difference. Um, if, if my maternity years were ignored completely, then um, it would have made a massive difference to how much we were bringing in. And she's not alone. Jolie Brearley runs the campaign group Pregnant Then Screwed. They estimate 75,000 new mums are affected and say it's indirect sex days. discrimination. And they have started legal proceedings against the Chancellor. Yes, Rishi Sunak has been questioned on this numerous times in Parliament and he has equated maternity leave to being sick, to being ill. They are very different things. Maternity leave is not a jolly, it's work. So to equate it to sick leave, um, I mean, it's frankly insulting. In a statement, the Treasury say their self-employment income support scheme has helped 2.6 million people so far. They say they understand the challenges for new parents who are self-employed, adding that the scheme already supports people who saw a dip in profits last tax year due to taking maternity leave by calculating the grant on a three-year average of profits. The York Central MP has also raised her concerns and is hoping the Treasury will listen. What I've really read between the lines of the responses I've received is the government haven't carried out a proper equality impact assessment. I've asked for that, I haven't received it. This is something that has fallen through the net and of course it's women yet again who are experiencing financial detriment as a result of a government policy. With legal action now underway to force a U-turn on the policy, women like Rebecca are hoping once the pandemic has passed, they'll have a business they can return to. Gemma Dillon. BBC Look North, York. Figures released by NHS England show the number of people going to A&E last month was down by more than a third compared to last year. Attendance has dropped significantly at the start of the coronavirus outbreak, but even though numbers are still down, it appears more people are seeking help. Our health correspondent Jamie Coulson is with me now. So, Jamie, just tell us about these figures. Well, there has been concern about a drop in the number of people going to A&E if they are unwell. And while these figures are still down, it doesn't quite appear as stark as it was. So if we take a look at this graph, what it shows us is that how many people attended A&E departments in our region between January and May last year. Now, it was busy, and in May alone there were 168,000 attendances. However, let's compare that to what happened this year. And as you can see, there was a big drop off coinciding with that outbreak of coronavirus. But crucially, it does look like the numbers are now recovering, albeit they are still more than a third down on where they were. And we saw on the national news that, uh, in fact, there's been figures about the disruption caused to cancer care as well. Yeah, so this is the number of patients who are being assessed by specialist cancer doctors after getting an urgent referral from their GP. And in this region, it looks like those numbers are down by more than a half. So in April, there were 7,387 assessments, but that's a 56% drop on what you would normally expect. Now, NHS England say that they are aware many people may have been put off going and seeking help during the coronavirus outbreak. They are urging people, if they have symptoms they're concerned about, to see their GP as they would normally. Okay, Jamie Coulson, thank you. 
More than 150,000 green energy jobs are set to be created in Yorkshire over the next 30 years. The local government association says that the low carbon and renewable energy sectors will employ thousands of people in Leeds, Sheffield, Wakefield and Bradford. It says that the industry can help to lead the UK's, UK's economic recovery after the coronavirus slump. Majid Majid came to Sheffield as a small child after escaping civil war in Somaliland. As Lord Mayor of Sheffield and an MEP, he sat at the top table with those in power. So we asked him what he thinks needs to change to build on the momentum created by the Black Lives Matter protests in the wake of George Floyd's death. Here are his thoughts. One thing certain, these are historic times which we've got to make sense of. And as we do that, we have to bear in mind the words of one American author who said, to sin by silence when we should protest makes cowards of us all. This is me when I became Lord Mayor of Sheffield two years ago. This was me in the European Parliament, where I was a Green MEP for the last seven months before Brexit. Being a black Muslim refugee and growing up in Sheffield and holding the grandest office in this building was something that was unprecedented. We've been subjected to some of the most worst and vile forms of racism and hatred, whether that be online and offline, was something that I was routinely used to. Walking through the streets of Sheffield growing up and being told to go back to where I came from or to go home or walking with my mother as a child and hearing some of the most foul and disgusting terms and references being shouted at her was something that I still remember till today. Here's two people I've worked with in Sheffield on issues such as education and stop and search, which black people are disproportionately impacted by. At times in my life, I was regularly stopped and searched, often, you know, uh, four times a month, for often no reason, really. And I think if we're, if we're going to begin to, to build trust and engagement, there has to be a level of accountability for those officers that, that often are over-exercising their authority. There's, uh, predominantly black people being excluded from uh, schools and you know it's a massive letdown because then they are cut off from opportunities that might come afterwards. So here are three things that I think we should do. One, make the realities of British colonialism and imperialism a compulsory part of the school curriculum. Two, the government needs to get serious about tackling racial injustices. And three, educate yourselves. If you're not black, the most important thing you could do right now is to learn something about the situation. Being non-racist is not enough. We all have to be anti-racists. The thoughts of Majid Majid. Well, that's the news. Let's have a look at the weather prospects now. And uh, with news, I think, of some uh, pretty rough weather to come. Here's Paul. Well, yes, uh, there's plenty of rain in the forecast and a strong wind, unusually uh, strong, especially along the coast and over the hills, coming straight in from the northeast. And uh, certainly by the end of the afternoon, certainly to this evening, we will all be wet as well. So a bit of a, an interlude before that rain sets in from the northeast. We've got weather fronts pushing in from the North Sea. This will bring rain into Saturday morning, but we're still on course for quite a big improvement to come on Sunday. The risk of a thunderstorm, but for most it should be warm and bright. Right, you can see on the satellite picture where the clouds are coming from. There's just a little bit of a gap there that's filling in. So although there's a bit of patchy rain over the Pennines at the moment, most of us are dry. But there's that next area of rain really moving very quickly, uh, reaching most parts by the end of the afternoon. Some heavy bursts, especially along the North York Moors. And we'll see temperatures around 15 or 16 degrees. So pretty unpleasant this evening and overnight. It's going to be wet and windy. The potential for some heavy bursts of rain in places. With all that cloud and rain around, we'll see temperatures in double figures. And Friday is not too clever either. It's cloudy. And as you can see, there'll be further outbreaks of rain and drizzle. It may well be. Certainly South Yorkshire turns a little drier and brighter later. This is where the best temperatures will be coming in at around about 18 degrees. Back to you, Ian. Well, I did hear the words warm and bright, so it can't be that bad. Thanks, <laughs> That's Paul. Right. That's all for now. We're back at 6.30. Good afternoon.